this is day three of our trip in Australia and we have decided to hire a car for two days which I'm actually really excited about because we've spent two days having that city living and pretty much only using public transport or walking or an Uber for you yesterday. Yeah, pretty much. But we thought we'd get out of the CBD area, hire a car, and I will say it's been a very eventful <laughs> morning. So There's far. been multiple reasons. <laughs> Firstly, we didn't know where we could park the car. With the apartment <laughs> rental, which I highly recommend, the apartment's been really nice for us because of the yeah. gym, the serial port and all of that stuff. But it comes with a free parking space, which is great in the middle of the city. We should have just checked, but we decided we knew better. So we ended up trying to park the car in the wrong building. We then got blocked in because that fog I didn't work. know better. I kept saying yesterday to Ant, check the book, check the instructions. But the bit that I failed is that I should have just done it myself. I shouldn't expect a man to check things because exactly. man's log men's logic is like... We do things. <laughs> we don't do. check things. We do them. <laughs> and then we do them again if necessary, which is exactly what happened. And we ended up losing a good 20 minutes. We went into the wrong car park. And it then it was but the whole thing. we've then had the joy of trying to drive one in a new city two in a city that has trams and different road markings signage. And road signage that is confusing for me i find it fairly easy to drive anywhere in the world this has been the most confusing and then we assumed that coming out of the city would be, be easier. easier and it hasn't so they have surprise left and right lanes so you think that it's a straight ahead and but then, then it immediately becomes a left in which you can't get out of and it's quite interesting because i don't know coming from the us i always expect somewhere like australia to have better road signs and i don't know i just thought it would be better but actually the us is a lot lot easier to drive the there. us is the easiest it's as simple as it gets it's ridiculous a six-year-old could drive there <laughs> it's super easy a competent six-year-old could here absolutely not no. there's no way because you have to understand what the signs mean and, but and it's, it's been fun it has been fun what's just interesting to watch is people getting in a one lane and then it will be green but they can't go because they want to turn with the road that's bearing to the right so then they will hold up the traffic and if any of you are from Australia and know about the roads here, comment below and let us know what you think, because I'm very curious as for Australians, what you think about your roads. But the the other thing that I've noticed driving around is, it is so much like England. And I know yeah. that makes sense, it might seem ridiculous because it was born out of Britain, really. But it just feels like home. Every part, every yeah. part that we've driven around, we've gone, oh, this looks like Pecan Bay. Oh, this looks like Dulwich. This looks like central London. It all looks so similar. I don't think we've ever had that. No, and else I actually travel. made the assumption that coming out of the city, and this is how it is in America, so if you go somewhere, you'll leave the main city and go straight on to an interstate or freeway. So in my head, that's what's going to happen. But actually, this is very like, very much oh, yeah, like driving in house. London. Yeah, and right. then you'll have these like A roads that you get yeah. on. And I don't know, it makes me feel very at home. Yeah. What I would say though is it's a like it. very beautiful city, yeah. town. The buildings are, for me, a lot nicer. Some of them look like kind of colonial, but right in the middle of the city. And then it will go to the traditional 1970s concrete jungles. And then back to what looks like a colonial type, which it can't be. Because I don't know the architecture. No, and I don't know the history here, but it is very nice. and it. I'm going to keep saying it. It does. It reminds me of the southeast of England a lot, and it's in particular London. Do you think not just? Cause I guess so. Here it is, the southeast of England. You're right. Actually, yeah. we haven't travelled far enough yeah. yet to know. And I think this is why I feel so comfortable. It just feels like I'm back at home in England. It's the accents that throw me off. I was telling Anne last night when we was at the restaurant. <laughs> I go in and I don't know where I think I am, but then it will hit me that I'll hear an Aussie accent. And I'm like, oh yeah, I am in Australia. Yeah. I keep forgetting that. One of the things for me is similar, but it's not that, it's that everybody can understand everything you're saying oh, at yeah, normal English true. pace. I don't they don't even address. bat an eyelid, whereas no. often you either have to slow down how you speak or you know that someone might go, sorry, can you say that again? Whereas here... No, yeah, you're right. We don't have to adjust our speech at all. Yeah. One last point. The indicator stick is on the right and it's throwing me off so much. I've turned our windshield wipers on about seven times on this journey. 
but it's on the right hand side and I think we did have a Honda that was an import from Japan that might have been the same is it oh, a I Honda or a Nissan but yeah that's really frightened me off anyway let's get up to 100 kilometers an hour <laughs> that's not like England we do kilometers an hour right? so our plan for today is so we've got the like i said we've got the car for two days today we're going to drive to yara valley the wine region so we're heading to a sparkling wine place first and then i think depend we're going to be very flexible today there's no real itinerary itinerary and get the word out today but we've picked a wine place and a sanctuary to go to today and we'll just see what happens what kind of sanctuary an animal sanctuary which is in the wine region we'll probably eat out there and then yeah just have a nice relaxed day visiting the what is it outer skirts of melbourne city outer skirts i don't know is that okay. even a word no that's not a word what is that there's outskirts <laughs> outskirts outer regions maybe i don't know <laughs> outer city, city limits an outer skirt would be like you know you have a dress city. yeah <laughs> yeah i um for me i've been having a great time here it's kind of you could fit right in just move your life over not saying i would but it is so comfortable in everything yeah. they do how the whole city set up and a massive benefit massive benefit for me is they understand technology and utilize it here oh, yeah. for example using bank cards and credit cards very simple they bring the, the machine to you to make the car payment and they know it because the lady we spoke to last night when we went to dinner she said japan and us for her they produce all of the technology and use none of it and i say believe us we know <laughs> we know we live in the most technologically advanced place on earth the us who decide no 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 we're still going to use paper receipts it's maybe ridiculous. they know something the rest of the world does <laughs> yeah We have arrived at Domaine Chandon, I think is the first one. It's a sparkling wine, Australian sparkling wine. I think it's one of the most famous ones. I don't know in Australia, but certainly for the this Yara, region. yeah, this region. It was only, I think, about an hour and 15 minutes from the Docklands area. And a lot of that is just navigating the city traffic. I think it was a clear run. What do you reckon? 40 minutes? Oh, it really didn't feel that long at minutes. all. Yeah, And it's really a really cool. nice drive. It's, again, we're going to keep saying it, it reminds us of, of so many different parts of the UK. <laughs> but there are some splashes of America, some of the ranch style homes. Yeah, the home types are a bit yeah. different to what you see in the UK. But we, the whole trip, I kept saying, oh, where does this remind you from England? It was like, yeah. is this like Bexley Heath, Bromley? Yeah, Brighton, <laughs> Brighton, everywhere. The area so far is very, very pretty. So for me, this is like leaving London and then going into Surrey or Kent. Surrey. Surrey has some really nice places. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. it does. I don't know. I've ever left Sussex has very nice areas as well. As you can see, the vineyards are in the background here. We're going to head on inside and do a tasting and start our day. Just finished up at what's this place called? Domain Chandon. And actually, super nice. We've done quite a few wineries between France and the US, probably somewhere around 10 if we totaled them all up. And for me, this is the nicest one. The vineyards are super nice, the expanse is massive, and you're in the countryside, and we can see the rolling hills for probably tens of miles into the yeah. distance. The building itself is really nice. They've done a great job of making it feel like a luxury place that you'd come and have brunch. Yeah, exactly. The things that are slightly different is normally when you come to a wine tasting, as far as I know, you come and do a wine tasting, whereas here... Yeah, and there's just the price for the wine tasting and then you pick your time and then you go in. But here it's that. different. Yeah. So what so do they offer? So you can book in to do a wine tasting or you can do walk-ins if they've got them available. But what they offered to us was the option to go into their main restaurant bar area. So you can go into the restaurant and have a full tasting menu and pick your wines or you can go into more of their bar area, pick flights and they have various different flights of sparkling wines that you can pick. And you picked the classic. the classic one. I think it was their exceptional one. And I picked their adventurous. They're both about 26 Australian dollars. And the Australian dollar is 
1.5 <laughs> to the US dollar. So I don't know what that is, probably about 18 US yeah. dollars. It works out there. really well. And then yeah. you can pick, you can have food as well, which is really nice. So, and we've had that in Sonoma where you can go in, but typically it's a cheese board or a charcuterie board. And but... the rooms are tiny, aren't they? Yeah. Kind of, you're not overlooking the expanse. You're in a room and then you might go out to look at the winery or the, the grapevines, but it's not all one thing. Exactly. And yeah. they've done a full wrap around kind of 180 degrees where even if you're inside you can see the outside and the rolling hills which i thought was really nice really really nice area the vineyard was great we would we just saw i thought were kangaroos but answer they're probably wallabies but yeah, I, wasn't I, sure. I don't know my animals <laughs> especially not my australian animals but they were maybe a maximum of two and a half feet off the ground they weren't very tall unless they had and very they were jumping heads. through the vineyard which was pretty cool so i i'm easily pleased so i like that kangaroos are like <laughs> five six feet yeah so They're maybe huge. they weren't kangaroos so if you are staying in melbourne anywhere and you can get to here within an hour and a half i'd say it's well worth oh, yeah, the trip and plan to be here if you're going to have lunch here a couple of hours to enjoy just don't drink too much because i'm not sure there's any public transport <laughs> we've all between us, I don't think we drank a glass. Yeah, so actually, that's a good point. A good when I was look researching what to do today, a lot of people will say you, you so you can book a wine tour, and I think it's going to cost you at least anything from about 170 Australian dollars that's per person to 200 and something, depending on kind of what you're selecting, what you're doing in the day. But it's a full day. The and downside is it is a from eight to five or six. Something which. like that. And then you're you're essentially beholden to kind of the itinerary that they've set. Whereas here, you hire your own car. We paid $160. $160 for two days. For two days, of a, days of a car. We can come to the winery at, at our own kind of pace, spend the time that we want, and then move on to the next. So I think that's preferable if you like to do things at your own time. So what we are doing next is off to the sanctuary. Hopefully it is a sanctuary, not just one of these weird zoos. And then we may go on to another winery, which doesn't specialize in sparkling wine. It's just a normal winery, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Just arriving now at the animal sanctuary, which I'm pretty sure is just a zoo that they've made a sanctuary. <laughs> it's called the Hillsville Sanctuary, and it was about I don't know, less than 15 minutes away yeah. from Domain Shaman Don. And something we was just thinking on the way here was about the weather. And I'm not sure if we've really mentioned this no. yet. It, so when we, when we got here, I was already warned from colleagues that the weather can be temperamental. Even though it's supposedly a nice time of year, you never know what you're going to get with Melbourne. And I didn't quite appreciate what that meant until we arrived. Yeah, they say, and even the person on the plane said to me, you can get four seasons in a day and you really can. So what the, the lady at the place asked us, oh, what's England like in comparison? England tends to be bad consistently and then you'll get a good block a week or two. And it's consistent. So yeah. you know what you're getting in the summer, in the autumn, winter, spring. Here is inconsistent that it can literally be 30 degrees followed by 12 degrees. And then in that same day it becomes sunny and then rain, which is really <laughs> strange. So you kind of need to be you prepared You have to dress for all, for all the weathers in one day. It's basically a layers country. Which uh, I know place. people say this about Vegas in that you can go from like really cool in the morning to hot in the evening yeah but in the summer it's hot again. you've got but in the so summer it's, it's 38 at night and 45 in the day it's there hot, is still hot, consistency hot. Yeah. whereas here we've experienced like Ant said it was 25 degrees 30 degrees then it was down to 15 degrees yeah. gray wet. skies then wet so yeah in this three days we've experienced all weathers it's kind of fun yeah. i think the tickets were 90 something dollars for two people 92 dollars for the both of us for a day pass and you can also have if you think you're going to come here a few times you can pay for a membership as well i didn't say oh yeah i didn't come yeah. to the counter that's why uh, it's been pretty fun it's quite condensed there's enough in here to do for what do you reckon three or four hours yeah you could do it. and if you really want to plan your day they have various experiences throughout the day where they're at the kangaroo area or the dingo area and then you can pay extra to feed kangaroos and do things like and have a close encounter with certain animals as well the only one that we did which was included is the bird yeah what's it called bird 
spirits of the sky <laughs> at the flight yeah. arena. You get to meet lots of different bands, which is Actually, fine. I really enjoyed it. I like You might as well, that. if you come into wine country, you might as well roll it into your trip. So we're off to our final stop, which is the second winery, which is a still wine place, not and a Yeah, a normal wine. winery from, I think it's called Tarawara. So we're going to head there and then it's going to be about an hour and 15 minutes home. Yeah. been having a lot of trouble with sat nav or at least i have and i think it's because australia is upside down <laughs> so my maps go the wrong way so the arrow faces the wrong way and travels the wrong way so it's nearly impossible to navigate now <laughs> so getting here was a bit of uh took some guesswork to make sure that we was definitely on the right yeah. way because the sat nav was trying to either tell us to go back into the sanctuary for the park which was clearly not correct and then kept thinking that we were traveling in the opposite direction so yeah i don't know if it's your phone i don't know but you said yours was doing something yeah actually right. mine was doing the same thing yeah, see it's australia yeah, that's true <laughs> the southern hemisphere but we have now arrived and again it's unbelievably grand it's as if australia has more land than most places they can build these <laughs> obscenely big structures the vineyard looks i don't even know you can't see the end of it no really. it's huge absolutely yeah. huge there so. was no real logic behind the places i picked other than a quick search online yesterday and a bit of checking of google reviews <laughs> but there's many many wineries like any wine region there's so many to choose from so with this vineyard you have to park at the bottom the lower car park and then you have to walk up this hill so the out of breathness is because we're struggling to make our way up the hill at the moment i think in the weekends they have a van that goes up it's no really... it said you can call them so i think oh. they're gonna come now okay. so there's a number on there that will, and they'll come and pick you up especially i think if you're disabled or yeah it's quite it's extremely steep it's on the yeah. hillside it's really not that long it's what three minutes we Four? haven't made it yet so we don't know <laughs> It's really not long, but in the heat, I'm, clearly I'm not that fit, struggling. Not quite the three minutes. I thought it was because I thought the entrance was where the top of this hill, but actually you have to go to the right, so the entrance is not that obvious, and then you continue. They're I'm making sure you get work. Here if you're disabled, because it's not really no, you wouldn't. accessible. No, it doesn't look very accessible at all. Mm, unless they take you around a different route. They're testing you. Do you really want to come to this binary? But it is, I don't know if you can see this behind, it's a huge lake. The lake, yeah, with the vineyard all around and it looks absolutely beautiful. Just finished up, but I instantly forget the names of everything. Tarawara. Tarawara. Winery. Winery. Great. We Thanks. made it to the top. We were both very sweaty by the time we got here. And what was a bit confusing is there's no one else here other than a group of people doing so a commercial photo shoot. Yeah, fashion shoot. And I think that not. It's not just a photo shoot. I think they're recording as well because I can yeah. see the hood. So it was a little bit confusing, and you have to find the directions to the cellar door. And when you get there, this cellar door magically opens in front oh, of yeah. you. Oh <laughs> yeah, I think I've got a shot of it, so it's probably playing on the screen now. But honestly, this place is pretty unbelievable. I mean, the whole valley is unbelievable. Way nicer than any other estate that we've been to, whether it's been in France or uh, the US. Amazing, no told you. absolutely amazing. And if you're in Melbourne, you're, you you come must must come to this region because it's a, it's a shame to miss out. Even if you're not into wine, just to see the taking the scenery, the yeah. visuals, the hills. And even if you're not into wine, but you're into history, the people will teach you. And that's how I ended up enjoying wine. So I'm not really a wine person. However, when they talk, tell you about the history, you have an appreciation. It changes, yeah, your perspective on it. The wine itself, however, was great. It's probably one of the best wine. I've tried at a winery for me. They had two reserve wines, which I really enjoyed. And it's not that expensive. And very reasonable. So the wine, we ended up picking a wine. It wasn't the reserve because the one I liked was less 
The bold. reserved wines are quite bold and punchy, which I like. Selena likes quite light and delicate yeah, drinks in general. Yeah. So we agreed to go right in the middle. Which was 35 Australian dollars. Yeah, even 35 or 40 dollars. Which super is cheap in comparison. Great. So when you're in Sonoma or Napa, you're paying. <laughs> unless you go to quite a small winery, yeah. you're paying quite a lot. But I would imagine a similar wine, we'd probably pay maybe fifty dollars there us dollars and if we're paying 35 australian dollars which is probably like 25 us so it's considerably cheaper so you might just recommend. need somebody to give you a piggyback or something roll you <laughs> <laughs> it's to, really not to, that long it's no the heat. and to be honest it's 33 celsius yeah, it's today, the heat that made the difference which is unusual so if it's anything below that it'll be absolutely you'll be absolutely fine, fine. Um, but highly highly recommend coming out to the yarra valley region whether you live in australia in melbourne and haven't done it yet but if you're coming here definitely worthwhile visiting